Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. Ready your blade, aim your bow, brand your enemy to fight for you. Harness the powers of the Rafe Celebrimbor, because this is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor is just a simply great video game. As a matter of fact, it was number three on my top ten games of 2014. Here's a link. But enough with that silly self-promotion. What I'm really here to promote is the mass destruction and mass domination of all Uruk kind. Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor is a game people fell in love with for a number of reasons. How it's an actually really good licensed video game and we can add to the library of really good licensed video games. How it embraces the lore and the world of Lord of the Rings. How it is both a great open world game, a great RPG, a great hack and slash, a great stealth. Just a truly great game overall. But what makes it such a great game, and what makes people keep coming back to it, is, in my personal opinion, it is because Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor gets two things right. Two things that so many other games come close to getting right, or just rarely get right. And that's dynamic combat and replayability. If you've seen any gameplay from Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor, you would see that it is versatile and brutal. And that versatility and the brutality is what keeps people engaged and constantly entertained. Because with Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor's combats, you have three very different, unique ways to engage it. No, actually four, now that I think about it. First off, you have your typical hack and slash combat using your sword. Your sword has a great flow, a good speed to it, a good solid speed. It's not too fast, and it's not too slow. It does a significant amount of damage on enemies, especially if you have it upgraded with certain runes. And your moves, the animations you make with the sword, your attacks, your attack animations, they look so fucking awesome. So elegant, swift, deadly, yet some power and rage behind them. Also, blocking is responsive. As long as you're paying attention to the hordes of enemies bearing down on you, you can get away with not getting hit once as long as you're prepared to block at a moment's notice. Also dodging, very effective, very responsive. You can dodge across the floor or dodge over an enemy, literally jumping over them, Prince of Persia style. As a matter of fact, that's a great way to describe Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor's combat, at least when you're fighting with your sword, with the hack and slash gameplay. There's quite a similarity, like, like a combination almost, a combination of the Batman Arkham combat and the Prince of Persia combat, just molded together to create the satisfying hack and slash gameplay that is both responsive, effective, simple to understand, hard to master, and just an absolute pleasure to watch, especially with those executions. The many, many brutal and gory and just badass looking executions that Talion pulls off are just, um, oh, they never get old. They never, ever get old. They are so versatile, quick, and brutal, and they just look so damn cool. But to freshen things up, you can't just always go around hitting Uruks with your sword. Sometimes you want to take the quieter approach. And that's when stealth comes in. Being stealthy with your dagger. There are surprisingly quite a few ways to stealth kill an enemy. Quietly creeping up on them from behind, quickly surprising them and taking them out from the front, jumping off a ledge or a high up area, and dropping down on them, killing them from above, or perhaps hiding underneath them, hanging onto a ledge, waiting for them to come near so that you can give them a nasty little surprise. Stealth is effective, very effective. And the game gives you the tools and abilities to be stealthy, with useful indicators to let you know how aware the enemies are of your presence, using your wraith vision to determine where enemies are, using the environment to keep out of sight by climbing on basically anything. Stealth can be fun and intense. And then we have ranged combat, using your bow, where the game almost turns into a third-person shooter. Depending on how well your bow is upgraded, you can have a ton of arrows to dispatch your enemy with, or only a few. 
Either way, headshots with arrows on any and all regular Uruks is an instant kill. And with captains and war chiefs, unless they're immune to range, can do a crap ton of damage. Or even insta kill like a regular or grunt. And when in ranged mode using your bow, you have the option of using a charged shot, holding down your attack, charging it up for a more powerful single arrow shot or just rapid firing your arrows to your heart's content. And when entering ranged mode when using your bow, you also activate focus. Focus slows down the time around you, making the orcs move in slow motion, allowing you to line up and pick your shots, which is immeasurably useful in combat and just so, so satisfying. And when using the bow, this being ranged mode, these you being ranged attacks, they really do mean ranged. While you can, of course, use your bow up close and personal when dealing with Uruks, you can shoot at Uruks from surprisingly far distance. Get some really good long distance sniper shots in there. Surprise the enemy before you even really truly engage them. And then finally, we have branding. Branding an orc. Turning him onto your side. Whether it's just mind controlling a regular orc grunt to just attack other orc grunts or support you. Perhaps give you valuable intel on a captain or a war chief you know nothing about. But the real fun with branding comes from branding captains and war chiefs, because you can make captains and war chiefs turn on each other and start little fights or riots or insurrections. Ton of fun using branding and manipulating captains and war chiefs to do your bidding and take out another captain or war chief that may be causing you problems. Using orcs to fight orcs. Brilliant. And so with those four different ways to approach combat, those four different aspects of combat, the hack and slash with the sword, the stealth with the dagger, the range with the bow, and branding, it offers a ton of variety and variation, a ton of versatility, flexibility, choice. There is no one single solitary way to engage in combat. The game gives you a ton of choice in how you want to engage your enemies. Attacking them head on, stabbing them in the back, shooting them from afar, or having their own kin betray them. It is so hard. It is so hard to even get remotely feel ordinary or feel routine with the combat. Whether you specifically just use one of the aspects of combat or all four, combining them creates for some very unique, memorable, and just plain out fun fights. So Shadow of Mordor got combat right. It got it down. It nailed it. It kept it fresh and fun and something you always want to come back to but they add even more to it. Next to the very replayable combat, there's also the replayability. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor nails replayability. It does it right. What with the combat, and of course, the nemesis system. No one can, I cannot stop bragging about the nemesis system. No one can shut up about the nemesis system when it comes to Shadow of Mordor because the nemesis system is just downright pardon my language, fucking awesome. And it always keeps the game fresh and replayable. As I've stated in my many Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor videos, and as I've stated in my top 10 games of 2014, no two Uruks are ever the same, whether they're captains, war chiefs, or just plain out regular henchmen. They never look the same, sound the same, or are the same type of Uruk. Cause while you have the three different ranks of Uruks, you have the lowly grunts, you have the captains, and you have the war chiefs, you also have different classes. You have the regular swordsmen, then you have berserkers, and hunters, and archers, and defenders, aka shield bearers. The, those guys are the bane of your existence. If you've played Shadow of Mordor, you know how much of a pain in the ass and a real challenge shield bearers are in Shadow of Mordor. So you have three different ranks of Uruk, with the war chiefs and captains being the most varied, having unique looks, unique armor, unique weapons, and their unique stats, of course. And then you have have the five classes, which account to grunts, captains and war chiefs, no duh, which adds more replayability and variation to the combat. You'll encounter Uruks who are all about getting up in your face or attacking you from afar. There's just so much. There is so much. There's so much variety and variation. This is how you do replayability in a video game. You keep your goal, which is killing and dominating Uruks, constantly fresh, constantly new. It makes you want to keep coming back. 
and encounter these new, unique orc characters, and combine that with the excellent combat system, and well, you have just a downright great video game which Shadow of Mordor is. It does combat and it does replayability right. This is the Gamertron, this has been the Gamertron Show. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did by hitting that like button. Hil hitting the like button helps me, helps you, helps everybody involved in the video if you hit that like button. Please hit that like button if you like the video in any way, shape, or form. Please leave a comment. What do you guys think of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor? Do you agree with my opinion? What did you think of the gameplay, the video as a whole? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I love getting comments. Please leave a comment. And finally, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the Gamertron Show and just stumbled across this video. I'm a guy who loves video games and I love talking about video games and if that's something you're interested in please consider supporting me by subscribing to my channel. Anyways this has been the Gamertron, this has been the Gamertron show, this has been a video and I will see you guys later.